So welcome to the first live cat match meeting we've had in almost two years. Well, exactly two years. Remember the last live meeting was in January of 2020. And after that, we, had, we missed February and then we started with the Zoom meetings in March, if I recall. So we've been doing that for a while and we have what do I say, three, six, 10 people here live at the meeting. Wish it had been more, but it's a good start. So let's get started. First off, a little of the stats, membership is at 55. There's a number of ways for you to follow what's going on with CAPMAC. Um, do we have any visitors with tonight's meeting? It's so been so long, we kind of bore. <laughs> <laughs> Very true, Jim. If you didn't hear him, he said, we're all visitors since it's been so long. All right, well, moving on then. What do we have going on tonight? Well, we have our standard business announcements and our business and announcements. Tom Weaver is going to talk about Vectornator. I have some things to share. And then Nathan is going to talk about Apple's free format, which looks very interesting. I'm looking forward to his presentation. So who's on the 2023 board? Well, this won't look much different or different than we've been. It's the same board you had in 2022. Someday we'll actually be able to get us all together live in one place and get a new picture. I think this picture has been around for a while now. <laughs> board meetings are held electronically uh, every the first Wednesday of every month. So if you are interested in attending, let us know and we'll get you the Zoom information. We have a number of appointed positions and Tom has been bugging me to tell him what, who is going to be resuming their position for 2023 so they can get some award points. These are those, the people who have been doing are taking jobs in 2022. Please, if you want to continue in this year, in 2023, send an email to president at catmac.org so that I can then put you on the list and you can get credit for it and we can get you started doing whatever task it is you've chosen to do. General meetings have been recorded, as I said before, since March of 2020. So we have a long list of meetings recorded and available in our YouTube channel. So if you want to go back and see something, a presentation that's been done before, that is where you can do it. And certainly share that information with anyone who has interest. Help desk, we had a brief help desk here. I don't know if you had one simultaneously on Zoom before we got all our ducks arranged here in order, but we had a couple of questions here. Uh, we'll continue with having our tech or help desk the 30 minutes prior to the start of the meeting. So come to a meeting prepared, whether it's virtually or in person. Otherwise, if you need to get a question answered between, th between meetings, post it on Slack or send an email to president at catmac.org and I'll get it to the help desk team. Coffee for CatMac will be coming up on Thursday, the 26th of January. I have changed the time slightly to 1145. That's because I have a doctor's appointment that morning. And I wanna make sure I have time to get home. So just to say 1145, it is in the calendar already at that time. And it will certainly be in a, the reminder that goes out and the email that goes out later. Always we're looking for participation from our membership. Do you have an app you want to talk about? Is there a tech tip you want to share? Let us know so that we can incorporate you into our meetings. Contact Nathan or I and we'll get you into a meeting in the future. Now I have a few news items of interest. I thought this one was particularly of interest. While it's not Mac related, it is certainly related to, there goes a fire truck or ambulance by. Um, 
it is something that we might be interested in. One of the driverless car companies has begun testing here in Austin. Limited service, but still it's there and is going to be on the streets. And if you want to participate, you can sign up and the URL to sign up is included in this slide. It'll be in the slide deck that you can find later uh, once I send it to Robert. So look for that if you're interested in the next couple of days. So Austin has been doing other uh, self-driving tests. So this is not the first one for Austin. It's the first one I've seen where it says, here's where you can sign up if you're interested. And I thought some of you might be interested in that. Something I came up, came across this week and I've subscribed to is something called Tech News at TLDR. Uh, it's a daily plain text announcement about tech news with short explanation and then a link to a more, uh, a lot more longer or more elaborate article. And I put the URL in here for where you can sign up if that interests you. I've been doing it now for about a week and there's been a few things there that I've found of interest. Of course, no one wants more email, but still it's, an avail it's available. Another thing I came across this week that may be of interest to us, and that's regarding Apple. As we all know, Apple has built a large new campus on Palmer Lane. That's in addition to the, Palm, to the campus they had on Palmer Lane on the a little further south, closer to Mopac. The new facility is up close to 45. Uh, they just announced here recently that they're going to expand that campus. So we will see more of a presence in Austin by Apple over the next few years. That's looked interesting and somewhere I heard today that Apple in California is actually looking at reducing its staffing. So I don't know whether that means there's going to be more of a transition of personnel to Austin or what, but at least Austin is going to be expanding. More traffic? Yeah, Palmer Lane's already pretty busy. Uh, if you look at, <clears throat> pardon me, the worldwide vendor share for PCs, obviously uh, Apple's not the largest, but it's as of December of last year showed up as at eight and a half percent. So it's a reasonable amount. It's holding strong against the other competitors. And with regards to Apple services, it has been growing dramatically over these the past few years from a very small amount in 2015 to almost 750 million uh, subscribers uh, in 2021. Wow. Uh, one thing we get, I get as president is a notification monthly from the Apple users group about opportunities for discounts. Here is a list of those that are available. If any of those are of interest, you have to contact me and I have to give you a password to log in to take advantage of it. So if those are of interest, send an email to president at catmac.org. Okay, that gets us through all the business and announcements I have that leads us to our real program. And I'm going to now stop my sharing and turn it over to Tom so he can talk about Vectornator. Well, and just before I do that, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Um, is there much turnover on that or does it pretty much stay the same? I, much I, I don't think it is much turnover. And thank you, Nancy. Nancy was reminding me that I, I should mention to you our picnic. As always, we have it in May. 
I had to think there for a moment. And we have it in May. Tom has made the reservation at the same location we had last year. Uh, and it will be on Saturday, May 20th. So it will be on the calendar soon. I haven't put it on there yet. And there will certainly be more information coming your way. That event will be where we celebrate our 30th anniversary officially. So please. Can you, can you remind us of the location, please, sir? Hyde Park Christian Church. It's at Hyde, Hyde Park Christian Church on 45th. 45th. We'll have the address and everything in future mailings. We just got it secured today. So that's why there wasn't a slide on it or anything. Good, uh, thank you. So that'll be something to look forward to. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing unless there's any other John, questions. a question. Um, yeah. That list of discounts, is that available? The list of discounts so we know it's available? Is that available online at the website, at the uh, catmac.org website? No, it's not at the, on our website right now. Um, can you send that out as an email to the membership? Just a list of what's available. I can do that. I'll try to, I'll, I'll, I'll plan to put it in the email that goes out for the coffee meeting, but we can't publish all the details because it's restricted. They say, here, tell people about it, but they have, each Mac user group has to designate someone to be the gatekeeper for all that, which basically says, if you want one of those products, you go to their, your local Mac user group gatekeeper, they give the URL and password out that allows you to go in and get the product at the discount. Right. Now, that being said, I'm not sure if the password has changed in years, but I, I don't know. I, I've never used it myself. It was supposed to change, but uh, I don't think it's changed in years. Yeah, so anyway, that, that's the de details. I can do that. I do think that it's basically the same list of products every time. I know that the, uh, uh, the two book publishers are there Take all the control. time. Take control. Take control and, uh, and the other one, I can't remember the, the name, but it's. Yeah. yeah, I've gotten some of the Take Control books at that 30% discount. That's quite significant. Well, and Q Publishing has a pretty good discount as well. And they have a much wider range of books. Um, I just, I'd, I'd like to throw out something here. Um, the one password thing, I, I, I think that still works pretty well, but I, I saw a technical report a couple of days ago that indicate that uh, there's another product called LastPass that I think is popular in the PC world. And it was breached, it had a huge breach um uh, sometime in december i think nice. and uh, and it was uh it was really a mess so i i, I personally use um uh, keychain and that seems to be pretty secure but i um, i i agree that's what i use and i basically i i'm cheap it comes with apple it's free it works well and it integrates with everything exactly uh, there was a big discussion about this on the London Mac user group meeting today. And they said that uh, LastPass and OnePass both use the same basic uh, code so that they think one, one, pass, uh, one password is going to be hacked soon. So they just warning everybody. Yeah. Well, I saw that at the, I saw the one password at the top of the list there, you know, for discounts. Yeah. And I would, I'd take a real jaundiced view of that. I mean, until well, I, more. I, I have to say this list came out about two weeks ago because mm. that it's sent out towards the beginning of the month. Um, so it's the la latest list, whether it's current today, I couldn't tell you. No. <laughs> Other questions? All righty then, I'm gonna stop screen sharing and turn it over to Tom so he can do his product review.
as soon as I can figure out how to do it. <laughs> I can sign you out. Oh, it's out. I just had to figure out where, where the button is. Hmm. Vector error. Okay. Uh, I should mention that uh, the past meetings are on the uh, holiday gift that was sent out uh, as an email, the direct links to all the previous meetings. And also on there were <clears throat> links uh, or a list of people's favorite apps. And one of the apps toward the end, alphabetically, was Vectornator. So if you want more information on it, uh, you can look there to see where you can get it and uh, how it works. Vectornator is a graphics design program uh, it can be used by fancy artists because it's got wide brush strokes and all sorts of things like that uh, to produce just whatever you want. I don't use it that way, and you're going to get to see the way I use it. Uh, if you want the full uh, spectrum of what it can do, you're going to have to go to their website. Because I don't know how to do those things. It's free at the App Store. And there's the app, the link that will get you straight to it. Uh, you can get this on that, that handout also. It's an App Store editor's choice. There's a whole lot of ratings, four and a half out of five or five. It has certain requirements for the various devices. And they're listed there. First thing you're going to want to do is a new document. Let me see if I can make some go away on the screen here. I guess I can't. I guess I can't see it. Uh, when you're going to do a new document, you say new document, and then up at the top, with a red circle, you select, select either landscape or portrait. Then down below, you select paper size. However, if you're not doing paper, keep scrolling down and you will find all sorts of different uh, iPad sizes, uh, computer screen sizes, iPhone sizes, whatever. Therefore, just further down on this scroll, but here I have selected uh, this one is uh, portrait mode and US letter size. Now comes the, the part, just take my word for it. Zoom in or zoom out, you see the whole page. And this is on the view tab. Show layers. You definitely want to do that. You want to show the inspector. Rumors, guides, dimensions, a white background, and the toolbar will also help tremendously. You just want those on the screen all the time. If you have a photo or map or other background, drag it onto your page. This is the coolest thing about this. It just puts that in your background and you can do whatever you want on top of it. So here I just had a photo and I drug that onto the, the page and away we go. Uh, once you drag it onto the page, on the left side of your win working window is a toolbar. The top tool there is the grabber, one that had arrow. Use the grabber to grab the corners of your background image that you just put on your screen, make it the proper size, and you want to grab it on the, the one of the corners 
because if you grab it on the side, it'll change the shape. And that's probably not what you're wanting to do. Then you grab the image with the grabber and position it where you want on the page. It doesn't have to take up the whole page. That's up to you. The seventh tool down, the A in the box, is the text tool, text tool. And that creates a text box. And you can write whatever you want in the text box, resize it, move it wherever you want. The next tool after that, the, looks like a black rectangle, uh, is shapes. And when you do, when you click on that, you'll get your choice of rectangle, circle, straight line, star, a whole bunch of other shapes. Um, circles and ovals, you can uh, make them wider, skinnier, whatever you want to do. And these are the basic tools we're going to be using right now. On the far left side of the vector data window is a list. The top entry is the top layer. The bottom entry is the bottom layer. You can rename layers. And you can move layers up and down by grabbing and dragging. Individual items within a layer are shown top to bottom. You can move them up and down within the layer. Items may be named. Click on the current name, give it a second or two to react. And when it does that, just put the new name in there. For example, uh, I haven't changed any of the names on this one yet. You'll see in a little bit where I've changed names. Layers may be locked. You do that by clicking the icon to the far right of that layer. You can see the lock is open right now on these. And just click it and it will lock that layer so it won't make changes. If you want to make changes, just click on it again and it will unlock that layer. You probably want to keep a bunch of things locked. Vectornator is an extremely powerful program, but it takes a second or two to do things. Give it a chance. But in the meantime, it may think you tried to grab something else. So it's best if you have layers locked so it doesn't grab something else. It's not exactly what you want. Left, uh, one. Notice to the left of the layers <clears throat> and, and the top thing also, is a little V pointing down. If you click on that, it will hide all the things in that layer and it will turn to a greater than symbol. And so you can see what's on layers or you can hide what's on layers. Okay. Adjacent items in the layer may be grouped so that they stay together. There's two ways to do this. You grab the first item, hold the shift key, shift key, and click on the next item, and do that as many times as you need to. Keep your finger on the shift key. Then in the array, once all those are selected, in the arrange tab at the top, which you can't see on the, the slide, click group. Or you can just drag the items on top of each other. Then name the group. You can create a new layer by using that plus in the upper right corner of the gray area at the top of the list. And new layers are put on top. But we know what we can do about that. We can drag them to where, whatever level we want. New items within a layer are created at the top of the current layer. Items including groups may be copied and pasted and then drag the copy to a new location. When you grab an item, 
in the picture, which is where all this text is, uh, when you grab an item on the page, that item name in this bar on the left will highlight so you know which description fits what item. And vice versa, if you click an item on the left, that item will brighten up on the right of the, of the picture. So you can see what's selected. It's best to keep things in a nice order. This is one of the things you can do with the way I use vector data. You could do an order chart or a, uh, a flow diagram or something like that. And what I have done is I've used that that box tool, the one with the A in it, created a, a box, said I want a line around the outside of the box, and I want to write president in it. So I put that there, then I did all the rest of them. Then I named that first box president, or Preds. And then I named the next, the next group exec. And also each of the lines there as a name. So and this is very simple to do. It just, it just takes you a couple seconds to get used to it. This is the kind of thing I do a lot for Vectorator mostly. Uh, first thing I did was I made pins by doing a straight line in a circle, grouping those together. And replicating that a whole bunch of times. Then they made text boxes and put numbers in them. And those numbers match a spreadsheet. It says what's at that location. This just happens to be microbreweries in the Austin area. I do a lot of trips. Uh, I have four pages like this. Uh, one for Austin, uh, one for uh, west and south of Austin, including San Antonio, one for southeast of Austin, and one for northwest of Austin. Now, some of them have more pins on them than others, but these are all microbreweries uh, in the Austin area. Yes, it takes a little time to do this, but it's not that difficult. You just follow along. Uh, and it's easy to go back in and update. I should say, not all of these are active breweries. Some of them are breweries that have folded or were listed as a brewery and they turned out to not be a brewery. Some items take several seconds to complete. You have to be patient. The other thing I've noticed is sometimes Vectornator thinks you've got a different tool selected than the one you want. Be sure you've got the correct tool listed. Command X undoes the most recent operation, and this is your best friend. <laughs> Use it a lot. Save frequently. Vectornator occasionally quits unexpectedly. Now, this is a fairly new program. And for it to do all the things it does already is rather remarkable. Just think what it's going to do when it matures. Okay. And while I'm here, there we go. I have a question. Okay. Um, something that I find myself wanting to do, and I've never quite get it right, is tiling page size, you know, paper page size um, chunks onto a, a large, larger drawing. And then, and then printing it 
and expecting my printer to uh, produce something that I can paste back together into a pasted up big picture. It's Does just, it's a matter of taking the local, one of the corners and resizing it, and then uh, go to say print. And stop there, don't actually invoke the printer, but see what it looks like on its little uh, peekaboo of, of what's going to print. And then make your adjustments. Uh, the, these maps are plain old Google Maps. And I, uh, little bits of these are chopped off. And, and I, I could show you what they look like afterwards. I've got, got them with me. Uh, but I chop just a tiny bit off of the sides and then laminate them so that they don't get run. Notice over on the left. You're not screen sharing. Yeah. Oh, I'm not. What? When did, okay. Oh. I got to be screen sharing. Well, you were up until just a few minutes ago. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got to get back into Zoom. Tom, I have another question. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, this Tom. Um, is this suitable for uh, for for drafting type programs, uh, architectural, for example? Yes. And and will it import from things like maybe ClarisCAD? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I can, I can pull in stuff into the background, like the, the Google map here, but I have not tried importing from another program yet. <coughs> uh, this is not designed as a full-blown CAD program. It is not, it for that. It's not uh, anything like a CAD program. Anyway, down on the left, you see I've renamed uh, the text boxes. I renamed the text box to be the first one on layer two to be 220. And that's the number that appears there. And then after that is the group, which is the circle and the, pin, and the straight line that, that makes a pin. I have all these listed there. And you can see. This goes on and on and on. So it can handle many layers. And then I've got a, another layer down here, which is the title that's in the upper left. Okay, but the, the first, the first going back to my question, the very first thing you said was pick a paper size. Yes. And what I'm saying is, I don't want eight and a half by 11, I want 24 by 30. That's fine, pick 24 by 30 in the paper size. And the, and the printer will take care of turning it into eight and a half by 11 chunks? It depends on your printer. Yeah, that's, that's, that's your print function. Uh, Vectornator just puts the image out there. So some printers will not print like you're wanting. It it makes a difference about the printer you're printing to. Ah. Uh, they don't all do this. They don't all have the software built into them to actually tile the way you want it to be tiled. I, essentially, the more expensive the printer, the greater chance you're going to have a printer that's going to be able to tile the document. Ah, uh, that's a useful insight. Oh, okay. You can, now, always, you can always take printing like that to Office Max or Office Depot and get them to print for you. What, what Nancy was sharing, if you didn't hear, was you could use some service like Office Max or Office Depot or similar places to print those kinds of documents for you right. if you don't have the right printer yourself. Notice over on the right on the, on this screenshot or on this so uh, actually a live image there are some other things there where you can send things forward uh, click on a particular item or send it forward or backward 
are all the way to the front or all the way to the back. There's, uh, you can change your, your font size, all sorts of other things. Uh, and that's usually controlled over on the, the gray section on the right. And it's just a matter of finding where those items are and then, uh, then going with it. For example, if I click on, I click on the 270 here. Is there a list of printers somewhere that uh, work with this program? Uh, no, it, it, this will work with just about any printer as long as you can put the size paper in that you're doing it on. Uh, but, the, but the printer may not have tiling capabilities. That's all I'm saying. And it, it has to have that part built into the printer, not into the program you're putting into it, basically, the, the file you're putting into it. Okay. There, let me select something there. Let me select the text and you see it popped up toward the top, put a blue box around it. Uh, I did it by clicking on the, the thing at the left. And then now it says that the stuff that's relevant for that. It's Helvetica seven point. I can make it bold. I can do whatever, whatever else I wanted to do with it. And the choices over on the right are dependent upon what you have selected. Now I check this time I have the, the pin selected and that's a group and there's thing, there's choices like ungroup and stuff like that. Ungroup over on the right here. But I don't want to do that. <laughs> Don, in an example like this, can you zoom in and out with what you've got? Up here in the upper left, you can zoom or you can, uh, it says right there 94%. It's not showing that on yours. It's off the top under the, the thing where Zoom is taking over the top. There's a thing up there that says it's currently at 94%. And you can change that to whatever you want. Or you can go up to the very top where it says view. <coughs> and there's a zoom in, zoom out, and zoom to fit. So you get your choices there. Any other questions? It, this is a great program. It does all sorts of stuff. Uh, it, it, it's taken over from Candy Apple. Or, or I was using Candy Apple, and uh, that kind of they didn't they quit updating it, and didn't it didn't fit with the current operating system and stuff. So if this is a, a great product. It looks like it's going to continue. Uh, there's a lot of people that really like it. And it's free. Totally free. Totally free. Cool. It's also taken over to graphic converter. Okay. What? Uh, Nancy was saying that this product is taken over from uh, graphic, converter. graphic converter for the Mac. Well, it's taken over from graphic converter. Then it will probably import those other kinds of drawings. Not CAD files. Not yeah, CAD files. Oh, they're, they're they're unique to themselves. But you can you can take your CAD file, export it as a PDF, and then bring it in as a background if you're just going to add things to it. Wow. But if not, you have to draw it all. <laughs> Every little line. <laughs> So, well, the question is, is, are there any true Mac applications that are graphic app, graphic design apps? Yeah, Illustrator. Illustrator and InDesign were the two that were mentioned. But they're slightly different. Any other questions before we move on? Nancy. Um, you talked about um, it taking a couple seconds sometimes to react. Yes. Is that, do you 
I don't think so. I think it's the program that's on on here is just it just does so many things that it, it takes a while to get through it. And I probably have my desk properly cluttered to where it doesn't have as much memory as it would really like. The question was uh, regarding the, the the lag that Tom mentioned on some functions. Uh, Nancy was asking about to put Tom's answer in context. Anything else before we move on? Okay, well then let's see if I can remember how to share my screen. Okay, and you should be seeing, yep, you are, my slides. So get to that. Now I'm gonna talk about a few things. Now, mine is not gonna be so much of how to, but more of an explanation of things that can be done and some of the apps you can use to do them. Now, as I mentioned here, when I was thinking about my talk tonight, I was trying to decide, which is why it wasn't in the, the announcement, what am I gonna talk about? So I was thinking that the three things that I spend most of my time doing are reading and, and books, uh, World War II history, and then of course, Mac OS or iOS kinds of tech. So what I put together is sort of a combo of all those things. Now I'll run through these pretty quickly because I wanna make sure Nathan has plenty of time for his talk. Now, as I said, I do a lot of reading and I get my books from a lot of sources. One of them is this one. Um, and did I say what it was? Yes, my next read. And it's a service you can sign up for. You get an email almost every day and it lists books that are either 99 cents or free. You tell it, you configure what topics you want. Like I've got mysteries and thrillers and uh, historical fiction and nonfiction. So the day I did this, these were the nine books that they were promoting. You can go there and the URLs in, in here, sign up and then every day you'll get an email. If you clicked on one of these, it would take you to Amazon, which then allows you to buy it at the, desert, the advertised price. These prices don't last forever. They're usually three or four days and then they'll go back to their normal price. But if you're looking for a lot of books to read for a low cost, this is a way to do it, one of many. And I'll just mention down at the bottom, I also have a link to something on my blog that says, here's all these places you can get books. So you can look further there. I don't want to go further. I, I, I download them as eBooks onto the Kindle app. I don't read paper books because number one, they're too heavy. Number two, I can't read them at night. I can't make the text bigger. And I can carry around dozens of books on my iPad that I couldn't carry around live. Speaking of books, one book I read last year that I thought was really outstanding is this book by Andy Weir called Hail Mary. You might be familiar with Andy Weir because he was the author that wrote the original book that the movie The Martian was based upon. Uh, it was a very successful movie and there's a lot of science in there. In this book, it's very much the same. This is his third novel. I've read all three of them now. And there's a lot of science in here. Basically, this guy goes on a long-term space mission, and then he has to do all this basic science and math to figure things out. As I mentioned here, this is a great book, STEM-oriented book. Some of the things he does, you could do at home. Even. So that was just a specific book I would recommend. Now, when I read books, um, a lot of times, particularly when I'm looking at a nonfiction book, I want to save some information. Now, I used to try copying that down. I thought, after a while, it's like, number one, I couldn't read it half the time afterwards. And so I discovered that if you're using the Kindle app, you can go in and highlight something, a highlight part of the text. And you just hold your finger on the screen, you're on an iPad, 
and that highlights the word you're touching and you can then drag the, the, the range to be highlighted, pick a highlighted color. And you can go that through your entire book. So you captured, you've highlighted certain things you want to have. So once you've done that, you can then view that. And if you look at your Kindle and at the very top, you can hardly see that, but um, at the top of the screen, there is, and I think I talked about it more over here, there is a little icon on the top right that looks like a page with writing on it. If you click that, that, I keep wanting to swipe right, that presents you with what you see here on the left, which is a list of all the passages and that in the book you're reading that have been highlighted, which is cool. But what's even better is now that you have them, you can export them. And there is that export button at the top of the screen. And then you can say, I wanna export this and email that list of passages to me. And as you can see here on the right, that's the, what was emailed to me. So now I can go through a book, copy down a whole bunch of things by highlighting it, email it to me, and I have a hard copy of those things that I've highlighted. Uh, when I'm reading things about World War II and I want dates and names, this is a great way to capture that stuff. Because some of the names I can't spell half the time. So it's a great way to do it. So going a little further, again with the Kindle, I often am reading, as I mentioned, World War II nonfiction, and they'll be talking about a battle or something that was going on in, in Europe or in the Middle East. Uh, this was particularly useful for descriptions of what went on in the CBI theater, that is China, Burma, India. You know, I don't know any of those names of cities, so, but they're talking about they went from here and they went to there and they did this river. Well, I didn't know where they were. So what I could do, of course, you could always get a map and look at it, but then it's like, okay, I'm flipping back and forth. But what you can do if you're doing it off, if you're reading on your iPad, is you can use the split screen function in your iPad, put your map up on one side and your text up on the other, and you can continue reading through your text. And now you can look at the map on the other side. And as they move around, you can kind of drag the map and move and you can follow where they're talking about. Now, what's this really good for nonfiction, but it would apply to anything where he's talking about locations and you're trying to figure out where things are in relation to the story. So I thought that was a very useful thing to be able to have. Okay, so I, I read all these books. After I've read the books, I write a book review. The application I use to write my book reviews is called Drafts. Drafts is a great note-taking application. I haven't even hardly touched scratch the surface of its capability. It has a free and a paid version. Free, is that's all I've been using. The, the paid version is $20 a year. Probably going to go that way eventually, but free does everything I need. It allows you to write in text, but it also allows you to write in markdown. So I don't know if you're familiar with markdown, but um, there's a link here to a markdown cheat sheet that tells you all the things. Like if you wanna take a URL and make it uh, a URL, you put uh, greater than less than signs around it. If you want to highlight it, you, uh, you know, there's different things. You put uh, underscores in front and back of it to make it italicized and so forth. And so there are ways to select text and have that acted. You can see on the right screen here, some of those things, but there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. But my thing is I use this to write my reviews. Then what you do, since it's all in Markdown, you wanna see what it's gonna look like. So you click on what's highlighted over here on the right, says preview. And when you do that, then you see it, what it looks like in a formatted sense. You can see what is linked, what is not, what's highlighted, what's bold, all of that stuff. So now this is what I've got. Now, this happened to be a thriller I just finished reading the, or finished writing the review on a couple of days ago. So I've got it. Now I wanna make sure before I publish it, I wanna make sure it's good text. That is, it's 
grammatically correct. So I use another program and that is called uh, Grammarly Editor. Grammarly is another program that is free at the basic level, but you can also go to a pro version or a premier version for $12 a month. I've stuck with the, the, the free version. Now, what that does is I paste it in there and it goes through and analyzes it. As you can see here on the far right, it says, okay, your score for this particular document is 92. It says, not bad, but you have things you could fix. Uh, there is an item called corrections. This is things like, okay, I have the wrong tense of a word. I said is and it should be are, or of instead of in, or you know, things like that, or here's words that should be hyphenated together. So those are all the corrections and you can go through and correct them. And actually you pick out the text that is, it underscores it in red when it's a correction. You can click on it and it'll open another window and say, well, this is what we recommend you do. And you can say, okay, and it just does it in this text window. So that makes it very easy to fix those things. I don't always agree with what they, they recommend. And there's a little icon under the recommendation that says, throw this away and you can say, okay, I, I want it my way. The other thing it does is it highlights passages under, with underlines them in yellow and says, okay, these are things that I take exception to. Maybe the sentence is too wordy or those kinds of hints. Um, since I'm not doing the premier version, I can't click on them and see what the recommend, recommended fix is, but I can see what passages it thinks needs to be tweaked. So then I can go in and play with it. Sometimes it's a matter of, well, the way I have the sentence arranged, it doesn't like, but if I rearrange the sentence a little bit, it likes it. And it's really making it a more readable, more engaging document having gone through all of these things. So I make all these corrections here. And as you see here, it was at 92%. After the corrections, it's boosted it to 99%. Um, that helps people when they read it. And it's, it's more a more engaging thing to read. So now I take that, paste it back into my drafts, use my drafts as my primary and paste it everywhere I want to paste it. But it's a great little application that's free and it really helps a lot with your writing. And I have found, because I've been using this for two or three years now, over that time, I, my writing has gotten better. My score, initial score has gotten better because it's been training me how to write. Are you uh, using Grammarly on top of drafts? Are you exporting your text from drafts into Grammarly to work with? Okay, the question was, am I using them combined together, that is Grammarly and drafts, and the answer is no. What I do is I write it in drafts, I do the preview that gives me the formatted text, I copy that, paste it into Grammarly, make my corrections, and then I copy and paste back, to be honest, so that I, I, drafts becomes my long-term archives of all the things I've written. And the good thing about drafts that I didn't mention is it works on iPhone, iPad, iOS, uh, Mac OS, and it syncs in the background through their own sync service. So I can work on something on my iPad, sit at my desk at home on my Mac, and I see the same thing. So it's great from that perspective. And as I said, there's lots of capabilities I haven't even touched yet with drafts, doing automation, and uh, you, there's a way you set it up right, it can publish directly to WordPress, it can do other things like that if you set it up properly. I don't use that function because I like to tweak it my way, um, but there's, it's got a lot of capabilities. And you can insert links, you can link draft documents to one another. It is a really nifty program for free. So those are the things I wanted to share. And as I said, not that I said how to do a whole lot, but what I wanted you to do was to know about some couple of tips and know about some applications you might want to investigate further.
Any questions? Tom? Yeah, I, I just want to point out that both of those uh, programs or apps are in the, uh, the holiday list of favorite apps. So if you go back to that, that'll tell you exactly how to get to them. Great. Thank you, Tom. Any other questions? Okay, I am going to unshare my screen and turn this over to, okay, wrong thing. <coughs> turn this over to Nathan for his part of the program. Nathan? Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes. yes. All right, very good. So let's go ahead and share my screen. And the first thing I want to talk about is just add on a little bit to what Tom was saying about Vectornator. There is a really cool feature in there called Auto Trace. So if I just take a shape from Freeform, which I'm going to be talking about in a minute, but uh, let's see, can. I'm just going to take a, you have, you have to use a shape that's kind of uh, has each individual element is, is, is uh, its own thing. So for example, it is distinct. So if, for example, I used before a, uh, this hamburger where you have the, the bun, the, lettuce, the cheese, the meat, and the bottom part, and that's all, each of that is distinct. What you can do in, in, uh, is just Command C to copy that, and then I'll open up Vectornator, create a new document, and then paste that in. And there's this feature called auto trace. Right now, all you have is just this one image of the burger, but if you auto trace it, now it creates a group and each little element is its own thing. So you have the top button and then you can move them. Like you can take this and you can uh, adjust it, tweak it, turn it around, move it around. You can even take, a, take away the background. Then I have a program called Motion with, that's made also made by Apple that lets you animate things for uh, Final Cut or uh, other programs. It's one of Apple's pro apps. So what I did is I took that hamburger and I created this. So it brought all the different elements of that hamburger together. And I don't know why it's showing that top one now. Bun, yeah. <laughs> So that's, that's just a really quick aside of uh, something extra you can do with Vectornator, this auto trace feature, which is kind of cool. All right, so. Got yes. a question, Nathan. Does that uh, auto trace work on uh, image files? Does yes, as long as, as long as each element of the picture is distinct. In other words, as long as they don't cross one another. Yeah, as long as they don't cross one another, that's right. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so Vector, I mean, Freeform is what I'm talking about today. This is Apple's first foray into a product productivity app since probably Pages, Keynote, and Numbers. And it, it, it's advertised as a infinite canvas or infinite whiteboard. 
So what you can do is, here we are with drafts again, but I've created a comparison of writing note apps for maybe a video that I want to do. And I've got four different apps and I've have this little shortcut that I use that will let you search the app store and crop out the, the icon for each of those. And so I've copied that into Then you can create these uh, shapes and color them. You add, can add arrows. And each one of these is movable. I would say if you want, want to be more like a mind map and have the arrow move with the object, then you need to use, let me delete that. You need to go into shapes and use this one with the two dots and the node in the middle. So then you can attach that first node to one shape and then the other node to the other shape. You can move it around however you want. And now it, it moves with the, the object. This one just leaves the arrow where, where it is. You can also uh, adjust each part of the line. So you can make the line thicker. You can add an arrowhead. So if I put an arrow headed at the, I don't want it at the, well, it's backwards. But I'll put it at the start then because I want it to go in the other way. And so you can add kind of a mind map type of, of feel to it. And it just, just keeps on, on going. Uh, you have all of this space to, to move things. The only thing I wish you could do on the Mac that's not readily available is uh, you can't drag it around with a, with a regular mouse. You can, if you have a trackpad, you can do it with uh, two fingers. But if you have just a regular mouse, you can't do it. And you can also pinch and zoom with a trackpad. Well, maybe. Yeah, there it is. Uh, it is available for the iPhone, for the Mac, and for the uh, iPad. With the iPad, you get a writing capability with the Apple Pencil. And then you also have all of these different ways you can insert. So you can insert sticky notes and write on them. You can make the font as bigger or small as you want. When you adjust the size of the note, the, the text moves with the note. You can change the color. So that's a sticky note. You also have all of these shapes, and these are the exact same shapes that are available. Then there's a ton of them, uh, exact same shapes that are available in Pages, Keynote, and Numbers. And they're organized by category too, geometry, objects, animals, nature, food, symbols, education, arts. But all of these symbols are also available in Pages, Keynote, and Numbers. You can have uh, text boxes. Again, this is just a, uh, unlike a sticky note or a shape, it's just entering text on, on the background. And what, what it's showing now, if you can see these little dots as a grid, 
and you can turn turn that off or on by uh, showing grid or hiding grid. You can add in photos or videos, links, and then you, if you have the iPhone, you can take photos or scan documents with your iPhone and bring it in, add a sketch with your iPhone or add a sketch with your iPad. Only thing with the iPhone is that you, you don't have access to a, the Apple Pencil on the iPhone, but you do on the iPad. Another thing that Apple likes to tell with this program is its collaboration features. So if you want to share this out with someone and ha have someone edit it with you, you click on the share icon and then you can uh, send in a text to somebody. So like if I were going to start working on with my wife uh, planning our next trip, I have this shared with her and you can see it has a little check mark over here and current part participants. Uh, she doesn't have her iPad on right now, apparently, but it'll, it'll show her name if she uh, has her iPad on and it's connected to Freeform. And then the way I, I send it to her is uh, just by a text uh, iMessage. And you can see here it's an untitled Freeform. And so she could just click it on her iPad and join. So now it's a, a, the board is under shared. So we both can work on planning our next trip. So let's add some, uh, some things to this. Uh, trip to Calgary and Banff. Maybe I wanted to get a, a map online. So I'll go to Google Maps and I'll search for Calgary. And then what I could do is take a just to take a screenshot of this. So I can do shift, command, control, four. And that will let me drag a screenshot of it and send it to the clipboard. Then go into free form. <laughs> and then Say I want to move everything. Down and put the map up here, maybe. I can adjust the size of it. I can even lock it like a, um, Tom was saying with Vectornator, so you can lock it and so that you can add other stuff to it. So like, maybe I want to take my circle shape and do no fill and, and maybe a little bit thicker brush stroke and just circle that area of the, the map I wanna visit. So like the Calgary Zoo is right here. <clears throat> I can, if I want to join those two together, I can drag over them and then I can right click, I'm sorry, I can go to, oh wait, why isn't it in this? Oh, I know why, because I've locked it. So if I unlock it and now I can group it, group those the circle with the map together. Once you lock it, you can't do anything else to it. But say I wanted to take my iPad and draw a root uh, with the, the pencil, I can do that if it's locked. So 
so this is a neat way to collaborate, plan plan something with somebody, or just uh, a a bigger version of a mind map, maybe. Uh, I'm trying to think of other uses that I could use this for for school. Maybe I could use it to plan the curriculum for the rest of the the semester or something like that. Nathan, if you yes. drag a pages document or keynote or you know any of the Apple app documents into this, are they live or is it just the image at the top level? So let me see if you can drag a pages document. That's a good question. Okay, that was the zip. Let's see. Okay, here we go. It, it's a pages document. You see it? Yes. You see it here. You can, uh, again, resize it. it it's just going to be a... Uh, going to be the you first can, you can double click it to, to to see it it's just, just going to be like a pdf it's going to be view only okay oops i stopped my share. i was just curious whether you could have it there and actually change what page you're viewing especially if you're doing it as a collaborative project yeah well then you would do that in pages i think okay uh because oh, there's yeah. col there's collaboration options in pages and keynote and numbers and notes Hmm. This is a, just a, an, another addition to all of those apps. Um, Nathan, can you do things like, for example, when you pull a circle, uh, if you hold the shift key down, does it constrain it to where it'll be perfectly concentric? Yes. So let's do that. Oh, we've lost your, we've lost your screen view. Yeah. Let me let me share again. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> I have too many apps open. So, I mean, that's pretty traditional behavior, actually. As a matter of fact, you can even do that on the iPad by holding one finger down and then resizing with the other. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, oh, I, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. Well, well like it. Maybe you have to hold. Maybe you have to have a key. Is it up? Yeah. No. Option is turning. I mean, con command is turning. Uh, those thinking shift is the one that held it. Is it shift? Yeah, try yeah, shift. Okay, there shift. You go. Yeah, it's yeah shift. there you go. Oh, that's well, that's pretty cool. So command uh, rotates it. Hmm. And then shift uh, constrains the dimensions. But there's some things missing. And of course, this is only version one of it. It comes with iOS 16.2, and it comes with uh, the latest version of Mac OS Ventura. It's, mm. it, it's brand new, and it, it comes with the, uh, within the operating systems, just like Pages used to, or uh, iWork. I but there's still a few things missing. There are no tables. There's no table support. Uh, Scribble, which is in notes, where you can write with the Apple Pencil and it will change it into text, what you wrote, that's not available yet. Mm. Um, that feature in Apple Notes on the iPad where you can draw a circle no matter, or any shape, no matter how bad your drawing is. And then if you hold down the pencil, it will correct the shape into a perfect circle or perfect square. That's not available yet. Mm. And um, live text isn't available yet, where you can uh, copy and paste like text from a document or a picture. Nathan? Yes. I think one of the big features of this is that multiple people can be working on the document simultaneously 
which you can't do in the other programs. And the idea is that four or five people can be in working on a document at the same time, maybe working on different parts of it or whatever, and everybody see immediately what the other people are doing. And that's how you could use it in your classroom. You could get several people on a team to do something and they could all do it uh, with using this. Yeah, if my school wasn't Windows centric. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, th uh, that that would be great. Um, but I, I did try out those uh, collaboration features with my wife the other night, and it is pretty much instantaneous. Although we were on the same Wi-Fi network, of course, but it mm. it was uh, I, I I did something on her iPad, and it showed up immediately on the Mac. And so the collaboration features are really nice and. It, it would be, you know what, it might even be interesting to experiment maybe as a cat Mac board to plan meetings or to plan programs to uh, maybe test it out some more that way. I thought the same thing, Nathan. Um, Nathan, what, um, what platform are you running this on? Right now I'm running on uh, an M1 Mac mini. Oh, that's, um, do, you, do you find that there are any feet, quote unquote, features of um, OS, uh, I guess it's OS 13. Um, are there any features of that that you find annoying? Uh, I mean, going from Monterey, I've been sticking with Monterey, which is OS 12. It's not and, a whole lot different from Monterey. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna wait at, until it got up to 13.2. Um, before I started looking at jumping over to it. Mm. Yeah, it's at 13.1 now. Yeah. And the point one release is the one that had free form. Uh, that's pretty good. That's that's pretty nice for free. Yes. I'd like, yeah, I, I keep hoping they'll come up, eventually come back around to something like Super Paint you know, where you have both a vector drawing capability and a pixel, I don't know what you'd call it, like a regular sort of pixel based drawing program and munch them together, you know, so you can do both. Let me uh, unshare this screen and just quickly show the iPad version. All right, share. Oh, never mind. It's going to make me download something. And I have my iPhone connected as a webcam, so I have all mm -hmm. my ports used up. I can't hardwire it in right now. But I'm, well, hold on. I might be able to do Let's try this. It, it does look like a very useful tool, and even though it has some drawbacks as you say nathan this is only version one and it's only yes. been what a month two months let's see if i share my desktop and do this can you see my my ipad yes oh uh, yeah good all right so let's open up free form So again, you have the same examples. Uh, now you have some of the different drawing tools. Oh, it does have Scribble. Never mind. <laughs> so that is. Uh, <laughs> That is scribbles, where it will take what you write and turn it into text. Then it has the the pen and several markers, crayons, uh, an eraser. Uh, oh, that's like a vector type of tool.
but it still doesn't have the uh wait let me go back to the well yeah it still doesn't have that feature where you can tap and hold and, and it turns into a, a real shape or better shape like uh it, you can do that in notes So it doesn't ma matter how bad of a drawer you are, it, it fi it'll fix it. <laughs> Except it doesn't fix it like that. Yeah, so you have to have it be <laughs> pretty close to what you want. <laughs> hmm. So that feature still needs to be added, I think. But it, it's a real, like you said, it's a really good version one. And it'll be interesting what people use it for and what I can figure out to use it for. Any other questions or um, comments? Uh, I guess I'll hand it back to John. All right. Well, thank you, Nathan. Well, I think we're all. Yes, sir. I want to backtrack to your uh, talk about the uh, Kindle, uh, real Kindle oriented. Uh, I've got two Kindle devices. I've got it on my, my MacBook. I've got it on uh, my iPad. I've got it on my phone. But I find that when I'm working with it on the MacBook, when I click on uh, a section that I might want to highlight and uh, copy and take out to text editor or something like that, that every time I click on it, instead of highlighting the word that I will extend beyond to get a, an area, it, it puts up um, a little window of um, what I can use for colors and shapes and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And I keep trying to, you know, click around that word trying to find it safe or it'll actually, you know, highlight it and, and drag it around. And I don't, I, I, I um, completely uh, removed it uh, from my MacBook and then reinstalled it from a download from uh, the App Store and it's still doing it. I can't figure out why it's, it's assuming that I'm like pressing a right mouse click as opposed to a left mouse click because I've got a, um, <laughs> <laughs> are, let me stop. Are you all hearing what's being said on on Zoom? Well, pretty much. Okay, pretty much. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I, I wonder if I, I don't ever use Kindle on a Mac, so I I have no frame of reference there. But if you had like a trackpad, would you be able to do it? I, I just don't, I don't know. Anybody? I, I, I haven't either. I, you need to find out some, I just don't know who else might be using the Kindle app on their Mac. Well, it works really good because it allows me to put together a program, especially for church where I have to copy, you know, sections out of the Bible and then sections out of a book that we're using and then another section mm -hmm. elsewhere. And it's, it, it's a hair puller, and um, I'm trying to figure out, am I doing something wrong or is there something I haven't done right yet? It sounds, doesn't sound like anybody has tried what you've been trying. Well, well me, maybe. <laughs> I just have a suggestion from someone else from another meeting. Uh, they use a pencil to select things as opposed to the finger. So maybe but, a stylist. But he's on the Mac. I just don't know. That's a good question. Okay. Anything else before we move on? Okay. Uh, we have a question. Uh, 
on, on Zoom, one of you will get uh, a gift card for a prize. Your person will get some other options, just so everybody knows. Y'all hear her, Nancy? Huh? Did you all hear Nancy? No. Okay. no. Okay. Well, no, just let him repeat it. <laughs> it, it she, what Nancy was saying is since we have a live meeting, not only is there going to be a gift card for those who are joined, who have joined the meeting via Zoom, she has some um, real stuff here to hand out to those who are here at the meeting in person. Including a new Cat Mac hat. Including a new Cat Mac hat which Tom and I both are, are wearing tonight. Oh, three, Koki is as well. Oh, we got more. So, all right, folks, that wraps up the meeting. Yeah. Uh, if there's no last minute comments, I think we can wrap it up. We can stop the recording and we'll see you all in February.